Hello. So I'm Kyle. Um, so you might be wondering uh, reasonably, who is this guy? You've never heard of me before. Alice Sonella just gave a talk. Everyone who's talking here, I'm sure you've seen and heard of before, but not me. So I come from an academic background. I studied, I thought I was going to be an academic. I studied math, I studied engineering, I studied vision. Um, and, but the research lab I was working for was doing consulting for VF Corporation, which I kind of fell into, and I ended up getting a job working for Lee and Wrangler doing innovation for them, and I did that for six years. And in that, uh, we, we did kind of secret innovation projects, which meant traveling a lot. I spent a lot of time in Vietnam, actually, going to factories, doing things with laser. And from my perspective, since I didn't come from the denim industry, um, I saw a lot of things that, I, to me, looked like inefficiencies, that you could use technology, you could use artificial intelligence to, to try to improve, to try to make better. So um, a few years ago, I started my own company, Kalai. It's a Turkish word. It means easy, but also AI for artificial intelligence. That's where it comes from. One, one of our founders is Turkish, so that's, that's one of the reasons. So the, the idea is to make denim design and development faster, easier, more sustainable, using these um, advances in artificial intelligence. So that brings me to the top. What, is, what do I mean when I say creative AI? So what I'm really talking about, you, this has been all over the news lately. I'm sure you've heard about it. It's called the generative artificial intelligence. So what does that mean? It means AI that can generate content. And what's been in the news lately is this kind of content. It, it's pretty incredible what it can make. Stories, poetry, blog posts, copy for advertising, um, legal documents, imagery for advertising artwork, architectural drawings, just to name a few of the examples that have been coming out lately. And I call this creative because the AI is generating things that are it's surprising and it's original. So it, it's kind of more like a creative assistant because you have to give it a prompt and it gives you something back. But what it gives you back can be surprising to you. And to me, that's creativity. Um, in 2022, and now the beginning of 2023, was a banner year for this kind of technology. Um, I'm sure you've heard of some of these things. ChatGPT, Midjourney, you probably even played with them yourself because a lot of them are open to the public right now. But just to give you some of the headlines that have been coming out, these things have been passing college entrance exams. Um, they've been generating art that's winning prizes. Um, they've been inventing new drugs with prompting from scientists. Um, there's a lot of jobs that will be probably mostly done with AI, like uh, mid-level writing, media planning, basic email, that kind of thing. Um, they're actually, they're doing coding now also, and this is a topic for a separate talk, but I think natural language programming is probably one of the most revolutionary things that will come out of this. And more relevant for the current talk, um, creatives are using this technology to give, uh, to generate ideas and, and generate prototypes, and architects in particular have been embracing this technology. So how does it work? It's pretty simple, really. You provide it with a prompt, the AI model has been trained on some data, and based on its training, it gives you some content. It can be any digital content, really. It's typically text and images, and the models you've been seeing, reading about in the news, are called large language models because they take text as input and generate something in the output. They've been trained on a lot of text. So for example, here's an image from my talk. I generated this with um, one of these large language models. I told it to give me a robot wearing vintage denim overalls, this is what it made. So you can see it's not perfect. He's not wearing overalls. He's wearing a jacket and pants, but it's pretty good, pretty interesting. The, my business talk, actually, I used um, the large language model to create the title as well. I, I said, give me 10 new versions of this title for my business talk. Creative AI will shape the denim industry. This was one of them. So you can see how it's kind of a creative assistant. This isn't an idea that I had come up with, and it gave it to me, and it, it was unique in that way. Um, so some other examples, just to give you an idea, you can specify the style of your outputs. Um, it can be photorealistic. So these are things that don't, that don't exist. Yeah, I created these from scratch. Um, here's a fun one. It's starting to get into apparel a little bit. Dog wearing a black beret and a, and a turtleneck. Um, <clears throat> but, so that's kind of cute. It's kind of fun. But where I think this is interesting for apparel design is these models are, are becoming interactive now as well. So for example, here's a photo of a model wearing a black tank top. And I can interact with this using these AI tools. I can highlight certain parts and tell the AI to make changes. So if I say wearing a, a leather jacket, this is a result that was created by one of these generative models. 
Um, and it, here's some other examples. So <clears throat> you may like or not like these designs, but it's impressive, the realism. It looks, it, it picks up on the lighting cues. It looks like it's realistic. It's in a 3D environment. And you can imagine a designer playing with this back and forth. Um, here's another example with the same one. I said she should be wearing a red blouse now in this case. And you can see some of the examples from the AI. Here's one where I said she should be wearing a denim jacket. So b before I talk more specifically about applications to denim, I want to talk a little bit about how these models are trained and where the data comes from. Because I think that's important. And to do that, I'm going to start with this article from The Guardian. They asked one of these models to write an article um, about AI. And this is the first paragraph from that article that the AI wrote. And it says, I taught myself everything I know just by reading the internet, and now I can write this column. So <clears throat> what I want to point out is there's this notion that they're trained on the internet. And what that means is that the programmers that created these models took a lot of data from the internet, and they, and they trained the models with this. That has a few implications. One is that these models are, are, are pretty good at a lot of different things. They're kind of generalist, but they're not good at any one particular thing necessarily. It depends. Um, and in particular, they're, they're not great at denim. So all the data that they were taking from the internet, apparently it, there wasn't a lot of great denim-related information because if you play with these models with anything denim-related, they kind of start to break down. So for example, um, I asked it to make uh, a woman wearing high-rise distressed denim. And you can see there's a lot of artifacting, and it just doesn't look realistic. Like, if you look at where the skin and the damage is, it's, it's quite odd. Um, and then I, I was curious if these models would understand basic apparel language. So if I'm a designer and um, I'm working with this garment, but I want to see some changes, can the AI help me visualize that? For example, if I wanted to see this garment with a frayed side seam, does the AI understand this kind of language? Um, so I've done a lot of testing like this, and the short answer is no. So in this example, I, I tried to tell it to give me a frayed side seam, and it did nothing. Um, so these models, the way that they're trained, they don't seem to understand basic apparel-related prompts, which begs the question, how can they be useful for denim? Um, and that's, that's where I come in. That's where my, my company comes in. It's not the models themselves. It's the data. So remember, these were just trained on a lot of information from the internet. It's kind of random. It's not necessarily relevant for denim or apparel. But you can specialize them. And that's where technical people come in. If you can collect the data and feed it to the model, you can specialize it so that it's really good in your specific area. Um, so let me give you some examples of applications. So <clears throat> this is one that my company, Collide, this is the first thing that we made. And it's for denim laser design. And let me explain a little bit about what it is and how it works. So. <clears throat> The, the way the current laser design process works, as, as I've used it, is you start with a target garment, an inspiration garment, and you take a photograph. And then you take this photograph into photo editing software, typically Photoshop, and a laser designer illustrates it by hand, highlighting the whiskers, making sure the black levels are appropriate. Um, and, and they do this in such a way that they can then feed it to a laser machine. And then they mark their blank garment and then continue with wet processing. So in my experience, there's kind of a bottleneck in this process, and that is this step, illustrating the designs by hand. It can take at least hours, but sometimes a full day, depending on how complex the design is. And you need a lot of experience, several years of experience, to be able to do this well. So when I was doing development for Lee, we spent a lot of time waiting for someone to make these laser files. And it just, for me, it felt like that was a huge bottleneck in the finishing process. But this is a perfect problem for these kinds of AIs because the input and the output is well known. Your input is a picture of a target garment. Your output is a laser design in uh, grayscale. So, so we, I was talking before about these large language models that take text as a prompt. But this kind of model would take an image as a prompt and output a different kind of image. So it's an image to image translation model. And so what, what we did at Kali is we collected a lot of this data, thousands and thousands of laser designs created by hand. And then we trained an AI system to learn how to make do this image to image translation. And this is our product. We, we offer it now. We're selling it. Um, and we found with the customers we're working with, it, it gets you about 90% of the way there. 
and then you can do touch-ups to, to get it perfect. So um, the AI is kind of doing the tedious part of getting your laser design most of the way ready, and then as a laser designer, you can spend your time making it perfect, making changes if you need to, or making a lot of variations, depending on how you, you prefer to work. Um, <clears throat> this is just one example. Here's an inspiration picture. This was um, the design generated by the AI. It took about 10 minutes to go from here to here. And then this is that um, laser file on a new garment in a different fabric and a different wash, but just to give you an idea. OK, so that was one application. Um, and that's a product that we offer. Now I want to talk a little bit about the future and what could be possible with this technology. Um, and specifically, I think it's, it's really helpful for digital design. It could be really helpful for digital design. So I think everybody knows here there's issues with physical sampling. If I have to make a garment, send it around the world, wait for feedback, obviously I, I, there's not a lot of speed there. Um, it wastes resources and money. But for me, it's interesting. It also kind of limits your creative freedom. If I'm a designer and I want to see this jacket in this middle fabric, I have to imagine what that might look like, or I have to get in contact with a garment factory and have them make it, send it around the world. It just limits the uh, amount of things I can do. So the obvious solution is um, digital, 3D design. There's already a robust industry for this. I'm sure a lot of you are, are, are well aware. Um, from digital fabrics and sourcing to doing the 3D design itself in these software programs. What I want to talk about is how you can supplement these things with some AI models. And how the AI models can help bridge the gap from a designer's perspective on the way that I might usually work, say with um, a mood board or something like that, to get something in, in a 3D design program. So for example, um, <clears throat> this is some uh, a design board from a project I was working on a few years ago. The designer made a sketch. They provided inspirational imagery and then text to give um, context for the sketch. And the point I want to make is you could feed this information to a, a, a trained AI model, and it could give you a visualization of exactly what this garment would look like. And you could imagine, as a designer, this is helpful, because if I can see exactly what this looks like, I might notice something I wouldn't have noticed. Oh, I want to change this. I want to add this. And it can be iterative, and you can do a lot of your design process with the AI before you even make a physical sample. Um, Furthermore, if in your training data you include things like scanned fabrics or maybe your fit blocks, you can actually output, have the AI output a 3D model in your preferred 3D modeling program. So now, as a designer, I can work in this 3D program, but I can also work the way that I'm used to working with you know, mood boards and inspirational imagery and use that with an AI to generate a 3D model of what that might look like. Of course, these trained AI models don't exist yet for denim, and that's kind of my point. The, the models are there, they can be trained, but, but no one's done the work of collecting the data and doing the training. And that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about, what we want to start doing. Um, <clears throat> but these kind of models do exist for faces. People in academics have done a lot of work training these models with faces, just to give you an idea of what it could look like. So in this case, I have a sketch of what I want my guy to look like. He's smiling, he's happy. And then I have a reference image of how to fill in the details. And you can see the, the, the AI model, how it did the output. Here's another one. I changed the sketch, and so now he has a beard. And it changed the output accordingly. So you can imagine doing this for apparel. I have a sketch. I can change my sketch and see a, a real-time update of my um, realistic garment. Here's another example where instead of using a sketch, now I'm using text. So here's a reference image. I have some text to change it. She has a noble face, long black hair. She's wearing earrings. And you can see how the AI updated the image. So again, you can imagine how this could be really helpful for an apparel designer. I have my reference image, but I want to make these changes. And I can give those changes as text, and the AI will update my reference image for me. Here's another example um, doing a collage to a, a visualization. So this is an image from a design trip I did several years ago. And this designer liked to work with collage. So they would literally cut out design elements and tape them onto their reference garment to get an idea of what it would look like. And then there's also some text information for the fabric, for the whisker dry process pattern. Um, there's a shade reference. And again, you could feed all this into a trained AI model and get a visualization of exactly what this garment would look like with all this kind of information input. 
Um, and again, <laughs> these models haven't been made for denim, but her face is they have. So here's a picture of Obama and Leonardo DiCaprio. Here's a collage giving Obama blue eyes and Leo voluptuous lips. And you can see the AI model uh, merging that information. So <laughs> the models are there, it's just feeding them the correct data. And uh, I'll give one more example. So in the last two examples, um, the, the designer provided something. They provided a sketch or they provided like a collage for the AI to work with. But you could also imagine kind of a guided process where you're making selections instead of providing something necessarily. So you might select your fit block, um, you might select your fabric and your shade, and then you might select trim, dry process, finishing, that kind of things. And again, feed this to an AI model to get a visualization, what, what would this actually look like if it were a garment. And you can imagine how this can really cut down physical sampling, and you can do a lot of design digitally, more so than if you were just using these 3D design programs. Okay, so to summarize, um, so the AI-assisted digital design, it can give you a clear image of what a design should look like based on the kind of information you might use on a mood board, like sketches, fabrics, inspirational imagery. Less confusion between brands and makers, cut down on physical sampling. Um, it could aid in designer creativity because they might see something they hadn't considered before and <clears throat> they can do a lot more rounds of interaction digitally. So it's like a creative assistant in that way. And of course it saves time, money, resources. So I, I just uh, have a few final thoughts. So I introduced you to creative AI, what I mean by that, gave a few example applications, streamlining, um, laser design, uh, creative assistant for a denim designer. Um, but I I'm gonna be honest, the title of my talk was Disrupting Denim and none of these ideas really are re revolutionary or are disrupting denim. Um, but that's where you come in. So People, everyone in this audience, a lot of people in this audience are a lot more knowledgeable and creative than I am, especially when it comes to denim. So all I know is my experience with denim, which is very limited compared to probably everyone in this audience. Um, so this is me and this is you coming up with a creative idea. So what we know, what my company knows, these powerful AI tools exist. You just need the right data, the right AI model and knowledge about how to combine the two. That's what we know how to do. That's what we've done. Um, but you don't know what you don't know, right? So I'm sure there are applications that would be truly revolutionary and I just haven't heard of them. So please reach out to me and let me know. We're open to collaboration. Anyone who has a great idea that you think would benefit, maybe this is the missing piece to your puzzle. You've had an idea for a long time and you've been waiting for a technology like this and I just don't know about it. So please reach out to me if that's the case and we're happy to collaborate with, with anyone who's interested. Um, and, and that's it. So you can reach out, reach me here. This is my LinkedIn profile, or this is my email. Um, and that's it. Thank you.